Hello everybody, how is it going? So, today, we are playing some Red Purple Law in OP06. And I have uh, three games against Kata Curry and uh, just one more against Perona. Four games just seems like the sweet spot, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I ended up rematching this guy a couple times. Um, I always feel like mono yellow decks have given Law a problem. But I feel like lately, I, I don't know, I, I, I think the deck is just aggressive enough now and has like the ability to ma maintain their hand a little bit more that uh, it definitely feels playable. <laughs> and uh, you have cards like the Film Law, which I think is utterly broken <laughs> in Takata Curry. Uh, it's just a really good, like minus two, like yeah, you're not answering the top end, but... It's really good on tempo if Katakuri, you know, plays his normal Pero Sparrow turn and then you just get to respond with 4-drop Law into another 4-drop. Um, I took my first life, so I can't get Gadatsu'd. So, we're looking really strong. Our hand is mainly just 2k counters right now, though, and uh, Gordon's and a Race Max. Uh, yeah, more more Gordon's is also very good. Just um, a lot of the time with, like, 7-drop, pretty much every yellow deck is playing, like, 7-drop Lin Lin. So having like the four drop law plus a Gordon or just two Gordons, two Gordons also answers Katakuri. So does the five, the four drop law plus a Gordon. So that math just always works out. I think if they draw a Big Mom, you're already in a pretty bad spot. Like it, it shouldn't get to the point where they can safely drop Big Mom. Like if they play it, you should be able to kill them. So that's kind of how I see it at least. Uh, does play another Paris Barrel on his turn though after stacking his life. We're going to bottom deck it after playing a Gordon, and I'm just debating. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I end up just playing one of the Kamazos, or a uh, AKA Killer, and then dropping Shariah. Shariah is also a completely crazy card, um, because Katakuri does like to swing for 7 a lot, and just all, in general, like, leaders, you know, being able to just swing big on, your, big on your leader to attempt to go for game, and Shariah just kind of, or, you know, like, try to clear a body, but Shariah just says no to, like, all that, you know, just ends up matching whatever uh power the leader is at and then you just have to drop like a 1k if you want to keep him around which usually you do because <laughs> the card is really really good but uh he does katakuri my shiraya that's also a thing i feel like playing eight drop katakuri into this matchup is just bad um maybe on a kid it'll feel all right but you don't really play a top end of your own uh you could consider playing ace but i don't think you need it at least not in this format maybe when ebo one comes up maybe you end up want to, wanting to play ace but i think right now you just don't need it i'll have the the deck list at the end in case you guys want to give it a go um i don't think it's anything super crazy it's just <laughs> it's what red purple law is right now is just a pile of good cards that happen to work very well with this leader effect so cannot complain at that i know uh also some versions are like trying the one drop uh killer that can add like kid the the hit kiri um what else <laughs> there's something else you could add you could burn like wire or like heat one of those uh to like have more targets it's kind of cool um i don't know how good it is for some reason i always just feel like one costs feel bad in red purple law uh because i've like tried it like when the deck was first coming out with like nami and i was like i think i'd rather just have a whole bunch of four drops to play and uh yes yeah, so i'm iffy on it but it is cool uh he plays Lin, Lin i give him a life uh yeah it's always tough to know especially when you're playing red purple law if you should give them the life or not i feel like most of the slower decks you're like yeah just heal them whatever but obviously as red purple law you're probably the most aggressive deck in this format so you really want to keep them low on life but giving them a heal it's all good they didn't get a trigger we'll be thankful about that we are just spamming 6ks because <laughs> you know putting people on have a 2k especially when they're countering out a lot it's a uh, it's a good thing to do because they'll go through their 2k's very quickly and then uh, your 6k's will become like 7k's if you think about it but yeah we kind of did absolutely nothing that turn we didn't have a reasonable out to Lin Lin we didn't really have an out in general we just left one up for the radical beam which uh, should keep me alive if they uh, 10 drop mom we have to go for game somehow thankfully they don't though <laughs> they just play the pudding and if I remember correctly I think they just whiff which is unfortunate but you know, <laughs> you're playing a lot of the uh, Wano cards. You're, you know, there's a lot of new cards in this deck, so it's no no guarantee putting will hits. I think I'm curious if some lists are playing like um, what's his name? Is it Shura? Shura is the uh, the Sky Island Searcher, because I feel like you definitely play a lot of those cards with um, 
if you're playing Om Holy, if you're playing Gadatsu, if you're playing the 2K Counter Sky Island, if you're playing Amaru and Reject, which you're definitely playing, so those already being searchable is pretty reasonable, and uh, sure, it does have a trigger, so there is that. <laughs> he actually attacks with, um, what's her name, Hiori, which is funny. Um, interesting plays. This turn, I just wanted to keep all of my bodies if I could, and just go for game, because, uh, it's pretty likely <laughs> that I'll die at some point to like a reject or an Amaru. He says GG, but I you know, I still want to play it out because he probably knows what his last life is because he just looked at it. Yeah, like he 100% does. But reject, I guess, could potentially get him to more counter in hand unless he really just had nothing and he did kind of just have nothing. So he knew. But obviously, we'll run it back. Also, I like his name. It's Zolo. It's uh, the four kids dub and <laughs> Zoro name. <laughs> kind of funny. Uh, Yep, we end up going first again. I think, did we go first like, first game? I'm pretty sure we did. I'm, I'm actually not too confident. I might have chose to go second. But we got nothing to do turn one. I hate greeting the Gordon slash Raise Maxes. Maybe it's correct because I have, you know, I didn't have a second one to start off with. So I don't think it's correct to greet it. Um, I just think it's like something, to, like, it basically just always gives their Gadatsu value when I'd rather not do that. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, I, I kind of hate playing them. Unless I, like, know the matchup, like, they won't remove it. Or it'll feel really bad to remove it. I'm going to get hit with uh, Onami, which is uh, annoying. But it's all good. I was expecting the Parasparo turn, because I believe he just searched one off the pudding. So I was like, sweet, I have the Film Law. So I'll just be able to, you know, really keep my tempo up while removing the Parasparo, which is great. Uh, I was debating what I wanted to do here. I'm like, I guess, like, I'll probably Leader Effect, because I want to... <laughs> spam the board as much as possible so we'll get down a uh, shiraya we'll bottom the onami play out a shachi penguin and uh we immediately get kadatsu on the shiraya which definitely sucks maybe could have uh i don't know that term is awkward right because you want to both you want to play raid off your leader effect and you want to play shachi and penguin off your leader effect and i really didn't want to waste my uh, my film law so I, I think it's an okay play. He just kind of had the Godatsu, and I just had to hold that one. Maybe I could have played the Kamazo, which I think I end up doing this turn. Uh, probably after, before leader effect, obviously. So we'll just go five, and then we'll go six. We are going to answer this Godatsu with uh, one of the raise maxes we have in hand. So we'll just get that down, and then we can drop the uh, Hitakiri, and we can also pop the Pudding. We'll minus three, bottom that play out the rage you draw two and then i accidentally cancel my leader effect for some reason i don't know why i just assumed it would automatically do it it's not like it pops like a random two cost <laughs> like you get to choose so uh, yeah i don't know i just canceled out of it let's hope he doesn't uh swing with pudding and punish me <laughs> but we're looking pretty okay we find the kids not sure if i'm going to be able to play him at least next turn just because i might have to answer what he plays here which is a lin, -Lin. so yeah probably gonna have to get rid of that it's gonna go seven i assume at my shachi but if he goes life i'll probably just end up taking it because i have a good amount of counter in hand i think i got a healthy amount you know <laughs> but our dawn does work out pretty perfectly that we can play law and the raise max and then still get out a beppo so that's pretty good i swing with the uh kamazo first just because he's the only card on my uh on my field that has an effect so I figured, you know, we'll attack with that. He probably won't pop it if he gets, like, an Onami trigger. So that was the mentality there. We'll play down Film Law, play down Raise Max, bottom the Lin Lin, play out a Beppo, KO the uh, the Pudding. We remembered this time. I, I assume we ramped off Beppo there. I, it didn't really look like we did, but pretty sure we did. Yeah, we did, because we were at 5 Dawn, now we're at 3. Animation just kind of was very quick. Um, so, yeah, now we're on 1 life. We have a decent amount of counter in hand, and actually I remember this moment, because I was mathing it out. I'm like, if I get hit with the reject, and then uh, he just swings rest of the dawn on leader, it is a 12k swing, and that's the exact amount of counter I have in hand. So I was like, please, just give me at least a 1k off this life. And then I was trying to figure out, hmm, what, uh, what cards in my deck don't have counter? Well, there is Raise Max, there is Gordon, and there is Rush Zoro. And uh, I was immediately like, it's going to be a Zoro, isn't it? And <laughs> it was a Zoro. So now we get exact lethal by this reject. Um, unfortunate. Uh, card is very good. I, I, I feel like in most scenarios I live, 
like 80% of my deck is counter, you know, <laughs> it's all good. He had, he had no counter. He says, yeah, it's funny. It made me laugh. Uh, we do get the rematch. I was like, thank God, not like this, you know, <laughs> and this opening hand looks very solid. We have, uh, some ramp. We have a Gordon. Uh, we have both a Reju and a, uh, Shariah, which I think are very important cards. And, uh, we top deck the film law, which is fantastic because he did play his Barris Barrow on curve, which is what we're looking for here so we're just gonna go five he'll counter we'll drop the law re reduce paris pro by two bottom him and then uh yep almost forgot i had the beppo we're definitely playing the beppo because if not we're gonna be at three dawn again and that kind of sucks so four is i think a, a pretty good sweet spot uh yeah if we top like a kid we're not gonna be able to play him but we'll have to live with that right he's gonna play down a hiori Grabs his top life and then stacks it. Swings big at me. We'll obviously take that, no problem. Grabbing another film law. Might matter, might not. We'll see. Uh, this turn is a little bit awkward. <laughs> I wasn't sure like exactly what I wanted to play. Shiraya is pretty good because it can't get hit with Gadatsu now, so that might be the way. We'll go five with Beppo. Ramp arrested Dawn. He does counter with the Gadatsu, kind of knowing that it's not going to get much value anymore. We'll go five with the film law probably just five with leader oh no <laughs> i get veggie okay so we won't do that i think we end up playing shiraya into um like double shiraya okay or we go law into shiraya or we just yeah don't leader effect yeah i think i think i that's fine <laughs> i agree with that uh good play past me <laughs> just don't leader effect for once uh he'll play seven mom in this spot yeah i just give him another life whatever going from four to five it's no diff He'll swing five at me. I don't think I should take this. I do. All right, fair enough. And you know what? I have plenty of cards in hand. I have a lot of counter, mostly. Yeah, I have three 2Ks right now. I'll be fine. <laughs> and uh, we will be able to deal with this Linlin -Lin pretty easily with the Foam Law into a Gordon leader effect. We'll definitely want to get down a Shariya. And uh, now we have two blockers, so we're, we're pretty safe. We could get, like, double Amarud, but we have to put him to, to one life for that to even happen. So I don't think we're that worried about it. You know, as long as we leave one up, we can't get Amarud. Sure, he can uh, reject, but then kind of just sets himself up for lethal, rather than killing me, because he needs an answer to the Shariah. So yeah, we'll go 5-6-6. Six, six. Um, does Beji my, uh, my law. If you think about it, you know... It's like he just used that veggie as a 2k counter in this scenario, because he could have just used that to counter out of one of the 6ks I attacked with. So, you know, it, how good really was Beggy? Hmm? <laughs> but, yeah, just going for 8. I, I, like, I wasn't sure, what, like, what could happen to me here. I do end up countering, because I was fearful. I was scared, so, <laughs> yeah. If he just, like, I think he ends up swinging with Hiori, which, I mean... It's kind of whatever. I think I just go down to zero because I mean, if he, he it turns off his seven moms at least, right? <laughs> there is that. Can Amaru me this turn? Can reject, but I don't think there's any reason to. It goes six with Hiori. We'll just eat it, most likely. I, I definitely thought about it because I was like, what do I even want to do here? I thought about countering. I'm like, nah. We'll just go to zero. We're probably getting pretty close to lethal. Unless we get smacked by like three triggers, so yeah. And we top deck the Zoro, which is a good time rather than hitting him off life last game. Come on, Zoro. And uh, yeah, we're looking solid. Probably just harass with six Ks. We definitely want to spend at least three Dawn before we leader effect, you know, to get the correct value. <laughs> um, he actually drops two one Ks to counter out of that. I think he's maybe supposed to just eat that and try to counter out of one of these leader hits, but I think I just have too many swings that it's just bad. He takes a 6k, so now I'm just going to go 7, because I'm pretty sure he doesn't have that either. Psych, we'll just go 5. <laughs> he doesn't have a 5. Yeah, so it should just be game. He just got no counter out of life. But, oh, okay, he got Amaru, but had no cards in hand. So yeah, he definitely should not have countered that first 6, because he could have healed potentially twice. Well, not really. He would have had Amaru heal once, get something out of life, then hit Amaru again, wouldn't have enough cards to heal, so... I still think we got it because we still had Rush Zoro. We still had a leader attack there, so I think we were in a fine spot. Unless it was like a Maru heal into a like Beji. 
yeah, no, I still think uh, there's a lot of triggers that could have come out, but I think we can win through most of them. And then finally, we have Perona. I'm I was like iffy on this uh, on this matchup. I've played it a little bit with my friend, and um, it felt pretty good from Perona's side, but it didn't feel unwinnable for Law either. So I was like, yeah, we'll just see how it goes. Playing any of my four drops early felt pretty bad because they just get hit with Ryuma or X Drake. So. I was trying to find value out of them before they just got answered for free, kinda. It's it's pretty weird. I think I end up just playing Zoro uh, on my turn two and just attacking with it. And I was just gonna let it go if he attacked it for like five or something and then, you know, not have to worry about Ryuma or X Drake. But he plays down baby five turn one, turn two, I, or my turn one, I do nothing. His turn now just attacks me for six. We'll probably use the baby five and then maybe just pass or play another baby five kind of <laughs> whatever he chooses to do. I do think um, he, he was thinking a little bit, so stuff might get cut out of this game. We'll, we'll see. Our hand is looking pretty good, though. I think kid in, or just having kid in this matchup is pretty good because it's a five drop, so he can't just rest it for free. Uh, if I attack with it, though, he can just reduce it by one and then Ryuma and extra both hit it for free so yeah, there is that you yeah, like five drops are definitely good in this matchup but there still is answers he whiffs off his baby five and then just plays another one uh i'll take it <laughs> that he whiffed uh, i can't complain at that and now i was i was trying my best i'm like how do i not just get annihilated by extra because like there's no reason to like play down this blocker law right it's not gonna rip any cards there's no reason to play raju I'm not gonna draw any cards. Shariah, again, will just get answered. I'm like, the only thing that gets any value here is Rush Soro. So we're just gonna go five at the baby five. Obviously, he should just let that go. <laughs> Unless he's dropping three 2Ks or two 2Ks and a 1K. That'd be crazy. But yep, we play Zoro and just attack for six. If he doesn't have X Drake or Ryuma, I'm feeling good. If he does, yeah, it was expected. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? If he did, it would be really bad, honestly, because we don't have any good, like, reduction in hand right now. We don't have a Gordon or a Raise Max or a Thelm Law, <laughs> so we only have an Otama. So that would be pretty awkward, but, you know, if anything fail safe, we just bottom deck the Baby 5 and, um, accept that he has established something on his board. <laughs> it'd just be like that. Plays down Sabo, though, so yeah. That's playing that Zoro on my uh, on my turn two felt pretty good because he wanted to play Sabo on curve so that means my Zoro gets to stick around for at least another turn also probably just didn't have the extra or the Ryuma because I think you'd just always take that because why wouldn't you should just swing five at my Zoro we'll probably counter with uh, blocker law because it's going to be a while until he even gets to seven cards in hand if he ever gets the seven cards in hand so yeah no reason to keep it around I have both the other better blockers in my deck in my hand right now so we'll just use him as counter he should just pass hopefully <laughs> yeah we'll go up to sixth on it's looking like play a kid and uh maybe just a raju because i think we're at seven cards right now yep also this this turn i, I always forget about the kid plays i should have Played kid first, attack for six with Zoro, use leader effect, get a dawn back, attack for six with leader. It was a misplay, but it kind of worked out because he decided to free block. And then I'm like, all right, you're still at four life. Hitting you right now just gives you a card, honestly. Let's just uh, go six at Sabo. And maybe he will just let it go because going down to two cards doesn't sound the best. I mean, he can definitely do it, you know, but ends up letting it go. I'll be happy about it. I'll play down Kid, bottom D-Baby 5, play out the Raju, draw two cards, <laughs> they're both Zoro. That's cool with me. In this spot, they're pretty pretty dang good. I'm still at 3 life. I'm, uh, I got a board. You know, we're looking good. He's on, I believe, 7 Dawn now. I feel like 7 Dawn has definitely got to be an awkward turn for Perona. What do you even do? <laughs> um, again, like, any of the poppers get a uh, pretty good value here, like uh, x -Trake. And Ryuma, so there is that. Could also just, yeah. Would he have an answer to Kid? Not really. I don't think Perona plays like Ice Age or Great Eruption. Does play the Kuzan though, and uh, I think Kuzan is just really, really bad. 
against Law because that's only a 5k and it's kind of greedy to ever get its effect. To be completely fair, he does draw a card, so I guess it replaces itself at least, you know, but kind of lose tempo pretty hard on board. And I think that's just always the case <laughs> playing against Red Purple Law until you get to top end and then they need like three cards to out it, so I think that's just any matchup with Red Purple Law. He goes 8 at Zoro. Uh, yeah, we'll let it go. I don't think I need to defend it. I still have two bodies to attack next turn because I'm almost definitely just going to play this kid and Otama. I think I was kind of, I was spoon fed this play, honestly. <laughs> it just worked out perfectly. So yeah, we'll go kid and then we'll go Otama, reduce Kuzan, and then look, we remembered. <laughs> we remembered about our, our kid gimmicks. So now we have more Dawn to, you know, attack with, which is very good. I think I'm just going to attack for six as many times as possible because he already is pretty low in hand. And um, if he drops one or two, two Ks, again, the six Ks become very impactful. Honestly, I don't know. I feel like as of late, I think we, like everyone that plays this game, is just like, yeah, six K that's the shit right there. We swinging for six, but yeah, he drops a uh, one, two K there. So I'm like, okay, we'll go five might end up taking another card. Or he might just end up taking it. Does counter for one with the uh, Inupe, I think is how you say his name. Isn't that a. Uh, I'm pretty sure Sans, that was Sanji in the Thriller Park arc, if I remember correctly. It's been, uh, it's been a little bit, but we'll go six with Zoro. He will take. Uh, potentially getting a trigger? Nope, doesn't use it, whatever it was. We'll go six again. I imagine he'll probably take it's pretty likely yep and we'll just pass it back yeah <laughs> I'd say her spot is really really crazy this game I don't think he's set up anything for his gecko and this would be you know his gecko turn if he even has it yeah it's possible he didn't find it that is one thing this is a uh, it's like pretty much all the black decks play gecko but gecko himself is really the only one that can like add it back from graveyard Prono just kind of has to find it, you know, <laughs> so does Sakazuki. I think it's actually least likely that Perona finds it just because she doesn't have Cycle like Sakazuki. She can't add it back like Gecko. It's just kind of like draw into it or maybe Sabo finds you it. That's about it. You know, you're playing Baby 5 as a searcher and you're playing Brand New and neither of them can add it. They can get it to your graveyard, at least Brand New can, but Baby 5 just bottom decks it <laughs> and, then, and then you're sad, so... Yeah, there is that, but plays a baby five, gets a baby five, plays that baby five. I, I hope he adds like the 2k counter baby five. That would complete it. Grabs a Virgo. Disappointing, <laughs> if only. But has five down left. Um, there are a bunch of good five down plays in this deck, but into a very established board, popping like a Zoro or a Reju. Does not sound the best, honestly. Because one Dawn on Perona is going to attack for six at the kid. We'll definitely just defend it. We'll get rid of the uh, Shariah. Honestly, it just always gets tapped in this matchup. We have kind of the only blocker on board that'll stick ever, which is kid, so we're doing okay. Plays down a Borsa in an attempt to live this turn. Um, it's definitely possible he lives, but he's in a pretty bad spot because if he gets hit to zero life has to use the borsalino i'm at three life uh ten dofi can only freeze three things i have what right now five attackers it's going to be six after we use leader effect so i think this game is pretty sealed i don't know <laughs> what kind of cra crazy comeback that could happen but we go six he gets rid of the virgo that he searched we'll go six again um I don't think he has a 2k at this point because the other turn he didn't so yeah maybe he finds one off of life we'll start going sevens because i you know have to remember we do have two kids so we'll get two dawn refunded so might as well just use it why not he'll block with the borsa and uh probably just let it go if you're trying to live we'll go seven with the reju and he will take all right Again, I guess a potential trigger, doesn't use it. We'll minus three, Dawn. Bottom the baby five, sack off for Otama for the Zoro. 
and uh, we're just gonna go seven seven. I could have went nine and five, but it kind of ends up being the same thing because a nine k swing is two two k's and a one k, and then you know the five k after it would be a one k. And uh, same exact thing with seven seven is that it's a two and a one and then a two and a one. So, yep, kind of just it's all good. <laughs> it's the same thing in this spot. So yeah, counters for or gets up to eight k. We'll go seven with leader, and if he lives. It's fine. Like, uh, I can't imagine that we would somehow die to no board. So, yep, his hand was just all top end. So, yeah, that is, uh, that's pretty much the deck. Those are the, or at least those are the matches that I played. Um, I might play it a bit more. I kind of am just, I really want to play the deck in EBO 1 when it's kind of got all of its pieces and it's just really, really strong. I'm still, I still really hope that it ends up being one of the top decks that format. With Sakazuki eventually being banned around then, you know, I'm, I'm pretty confident it will be, honestly. But, yeah, it's still very solid in OPO6, and i definitely give it a try. If you ever run into Raiju, you kind of just auto-win the matchup. So, <laughs> if your locals has a lot of Raiju players, play Red Purple Law. But, anyways, yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.